In regards to um, Renato Chitaro, um, here we have today in the press conference is the Chief of Police, Chief Stephen Ignacio. The investigations bureau, um, the bureau chief, Major and, uh, Andrew Kidigwe, and the division chief um, under the investigation bureau is Captain Scott Lee. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chief Stephen Ignacio. Good evening, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us today on such short notice. Uh, you know, uh, as you would all uh, know, uh, we would not call this uh, news conference at short, such short notice if it wasn't a very important matter. Uh, however, uh, we'd like to um, uh, thank the media for uh, joining us today on, uh, again on uh, very, very short notice. And so what's going on here is that um, on December 8th, uh, the police responded to an incident that occurred behind uh, uh, Docomo Pacific headquarters at an apartment complex parking lot in Tamuni. Uh, during that incident, 54-year-old uh, Arthur Wakuk uh, was transported to GMH for injuries he sustained uh, during uh, a stabbing. Uh, Criminal Investigation Division from the Guam Police Department were activated and assumed the investigation. Uh, through the course of this investigation, we identified uh, Ronat Chitaro, a.k.a. Ronato, uh, and we issued a wanted flyer for, the, for public view uh, on December 11th uh, in seeking assistance from the public in locating uh, this individual. On December 14th, we were notified that uh, the victim, uh, Mr. Arthur Wakuk, has passed away. So now uh, the Guam Police Department is conducting a death investigation and uh, we have been working very closely again with uh, Basil Malin from the, uh, the Chief Prosecutor from the Office of the Atten Attorney General and uh, they were made aware of uh, today's press conference. So uh, behind me you'll see a photo of Mr. Ronat Chataro aka Ronato. He is now the prime suspect wanted in connection for this investigation. He's wanted for questioning. We have been actively searching for him uh, since uh, information was made available and uh, leads were developed through the course of this investigation dating back to uh, this, when this incident first occurred on December 8th. Uh, we have been searching his known uh, locations including Hemlani's apartments uh, by Docomo, uh, behind Docomo headquarters uh, Heritage Apartments in Dunka, RC Apartments in Dunka, uh, these are in Tamuni areas. Uh, at times, uh, we believe that uh, he is, does not have, have a permanent uh, or fixed address, and uh, he may be uh, a homeless person as well. Uh, and uh, he hangs along the, the beaches along East Agatnya, Tamuni and Tuman Village areas. Okay. Uh, the important thing to note is that Mr. Chataro is wanted. And to anybody out there who has information, we ask that you call uh, the Guam Police Department, our dispatch at 472-8911, uh, Crime Stoppers, uh, or we have set up a uh, mobile uh, phone that we are now using at a uh, command post that we've, we've uh, erected uh, so that we can gather information that number for the command post is 899-0566. I'd like to also uh, provide notice that if anybody out there is harboring uh, Renato Chotaro or hindering his apprehension and in any way, shape or form helping him elude the Guam Police Department, again, you will be held accountable and you will be charged and prosecuted by the Attorney General of Guam. So uh, uh, with that, uh, please, if you have any information, again, please call 472-8911 or 899-0566. Okay, uh, anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Can you give me an example of hindering uh, versus harboring? Yeah, so, so it's pretty much uh, pe people that are not providing information knowing that uh, Mr. Chataro is wanted now and uh, we put this uh, out publicly. So uh, by hindering, uh, they, they, when we come up to them and say, do you know where he is? They may say, no, but maybe we develop information that he was just there an hour or, or two ago and uh, they don't come uh, forthright with that information. 
uh, harboring, uh, you know, that, that are people that are actively maybe having him stay in their house, knowing now that the police are looking for him. And we come to their house and we knock and there's Mr. Is Chotaro here and they say no. And then we find out later on that he was in the house. Okay, so those are people that are harboring him. And so, uh, again, th this is very serious. This is now, uh, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that, you know, we're going into a death uh, a homicide investigation. And he is wanted. He is the, he is the prime person uh, that we're looking for in this, in this death investigation. Were investigators ever able to speak with uh, Mr. Wilcook while he was hospitalized? Uh, I, I don't know. No, I don't believe so. He was never in, in a state where we could interview him regarding the incident. Okay, so no way to tell what the uh, relationship might have been between Wilcook and Chitaro. Right, that is not known at this time. Or what they might have been doing leading up to the stabbing. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're still working with that information. And so, again, that, that's why uh, Chitaro is a, is a key part of this investigation as well. Is Chitaro known, uh, I guess, known to the police department? Does he have a criminal past? No, he doesn't have an extensive uh, criminal history. Chief, you mentioned that uh, he was the prime suspect in this case. So um, I guess believe, I believe the incident happened in the daytime. Do you have like surveillance footage from the nearby establishments uh, identifying him? Uh, you know, at, uh, at this point, you know, uh, we're not going to discuss what, what evidence we have on hand. And, and that will play out. Uh, you know, when, when this uh, when this case goes to, to uh, you know, through the, the criminal justice system. Yeah. For those uh, who want to come forward with, hey, these are some other places he might hang out, who, who might have uh, some possible leads, um, what do they do? Uh, again, they, they can call uh, the Guam Police Dispatch at 472-8911 uh, or 899-0566. There's also another number four seven five eight five three two so the eight nine nine number and the four seven five eight five three two uh, we recommend or we suggest or ask the public if they could call those two numbers first please. chief it's clear that uh, the police department is out in full effect the full force getting interviews and questioning you know uh, uh, bystanders around the area are there any concerns like how many of the the police officers have you received the vaccine yet or are, are you guys in line next to probably get the vaccine do you feel like maybe you should be prioritized more since you know you know uh I, I just got off the phone uh uh just before this press conference with uh, mr arts and augustine of department of public health uh, the director and uh you know uh, i i found out that uh we're not yet uh, on the list uh to receive the vaccine uh, you know, I, I did express uh, my concerns with uh, Mr. St. Augustine, and it's something that he's going to bring. You know, again, uh, Mr. St. Augustine does not have full control of uh, who gets vaccinated, uh, you know, uh, next. You know, there, I think it's the VAPPC that determines, you know, the, the, uh, the pecking order, if you will, as to who's going to get the vaccines. And uh, in my conversation with him um, a few minutes ago, uh, the VAPPC uh, does not have us next on the list. So, uh, you know, I didn't express my concerns uh, because the officers, uh, I think, uh, you know, should be prioritized, uh, you know, that we'd go out there. Uh, we have had positives in, in our department uh, through exposure to, to the work that we've done uh, in conjunction with the, the public health uh, department. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, it's, uh, it's, uh, I've expressed my concerns and uh, I, I would like, you know, the law police department and all the other law enforcement officers uh, to be considered. Uh, because we go out there day in and day out and we deal with the unknowns and uh, we have uh, uh, you know uh, tested positive from our exposure down at the qual uh, quarantine facility and isolation facilities uh, our officers have responded to calls uh, of these known COVID-19 patients who have uh, unfortunately you know passed away at, at home and because they did not uh, pass away in a hospital setting uh, then we now have to conduct a uh, death investigation and so we've responded to actual known uh, positive uh, COVID patients who died, and we have to go down there, process the scene like any other death case. And unfortunately, uh, we're not uh, on that priority list yet. So you know, I'm hoping that, you know, uh, through my conversation with Mr. St. Augustine, uh, that we can elevate the, the concern. Coming back to the investigation, um, uh, GBD in the past has um, tapped into other law enforcement agencies to help 
uh, canvas areas, um, uh, and, you know, and are you guys going to be tapping into any other law enforcement agencies because Shataro is, a, is you know, somewhat homeless, right? And, um, are you going to enlist the service or help of other law enforcement agencies so that you can go out and canvas these areas and cover more ground? Sure. So, so what it is really is that we, we do work with other law enforcement agencies, for example, uh, you know, we, we will work with Customs and Quarantine and, and U.S. Uh, Customs as well uh, because we put stops at the border so that he doesn't jump in a plane and, uh, you know, get in a flight out of Guam, you know, to avoid, uh, you know, arrest or, uh, you know, uh, apprehension. Uh, in line with that, though, uh, you know, uh, because we, we are still in this COVID operation state, uh, we, we are, you know, tapping into the resources of other law enforcement uh, agencies like uh, for example, Customs and Quarantine, uh, Supreme Court Marshal, they're down at the QFAC, ISOFAC. And then we also have the Parks and Beach Patrol. You know, we have park rangers and um, the uh, uh, agriculture and airport police officers. So uh, while they're out there patrolling, you know, the, this Parks and Beach Task Force, you know, they are aware of this wanted person. So they also assist in the, in, in the, the uh, search. And, uh, okay. Okay. Um, the individual, um, the victim in this case was staff. Um, and uh, when you put out the uh, request for assistance from the public in locating um, Shitaro, um, it was also disclosing maybe dangerous. Um, it, is there any uh, indication of whether or not he may still be armed with the weapon that he used to stab uh, the victim? Well, you know, uh, I think uh, understanding that this is a, uh, you know, this is a death investigation, you know, uh, slash, a, you know, a possible homicide. Uh, I, you know, the, the public should always be aware of that and that they should take uh, the necessary measures not to approach him, but to rather call 911, uh, you know, if they, they actual have an actual sighting of him or a, a suspected sighting of him. And of course, we, we, we never advise, the, we always advise the public not to approach uh, a wanted person, uh, but to rather call for, for assistance right away. Uh, because I, again, uh, you know, we, we're gonna work on the assumption that because he, he was involved in a violent crime, that the person is a violent person and that they should take all the necessary measures to protect themselves. Have investigators found the weapon or recovered the weapon from the scene? And if so, do we know what type of weapon? No, uh, again, all those things are still under the investigation stage. What about the amount of times that uh, Mr. Wakuk uh, had been stabbed and where? Again, you know, all that information is actually still pending because uh, as you all know, uh, we have to fly in the forensic pathologist uh, to conduct the autopsy. And the autopsy has not been conducted yet. It's something that we're coordinating with the attorney's general's office. Do we have a time frame as when the forensic pathologist is expected to? Usually when, when we notify uh, the attorney general's office that, uh, you know, or we're aware of a, a case where a forensic pathologist is needed, uh, we fly the, uh, the pathologist in from Hawaii. Uh, that's where the, the government of Guam contract is. And usually we're, we, our wait is anywhere from two to four weeks, mm -hmm. depending on availability and scheduling. With that said, Chief, is there any idea of how many uh, cases you have from this year that have been waiting for this pathologist to make his way here two, four weeks out from an incident? No, so uh, I think that the last wait time was for the, the, the the incident with the the, the tumbling, uh, the shooting, and uh, there was a couple other autopsies that was performed by that forensic pathologist as well. So I think the wait time was probably about four weeks for, for those cases. Now, um, you know, we're always waiting for uh, autopsies to be conducted, but there has been in the past uh, a case where the uh, there was not an autopsy conducted. Instead, it was a body view. Um, do you know whether or not that's what is going to happen with uh, the victim in this case? No. And how does that impact your investigation um, in terms of the wait time and the type of assessment done on the body? So if if we suspect that a person died uh, through a, a homicide, uh, it's a homicide death, a murder, then uh, we, we uh, use the services of forensic pathologists. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Dodderman, I believe, is not a forensic pathologist. I believe he's a clinical uh, pathologist, or, you know, I, I, correct me, I apologize if I got the term wrong. But uh, if we suspect uh, a homicide, uh, then uh, we, I, again, we, we, we you know, it, the, the investigation tells us whether or not we're gonna, we're dealing with the homicide, 
a possible suicide, a, a natural or even accidental death. And so in this case where we suspect that this is a homicide, uh, then of course we, we would uh, engage the services of our forensic pathologist. Chief, you had mentioned that the last time you had to do the long wait for an autopsy report was in the Xavier to Tao Tao shooting. Where are you at in, in terms of timelines to uh, execute any adverse action or potential adverse action in that investigation? Uh, again, because there's an amendment to the uh, to the personnel rules, uh, we have a 90 day period now as opposed to the 60 days. So I believe we're probably just a little bit past the 30 days. Yeah. If not, uh, mm -hmm. may, may, maybe a little bit after that. Yeah. No update from that news release where you said the investigation is, is still progressing? Yes. And, and like I said, for uh, actually, because this case is actually being led uh, by the Attorney General's office. We generally refer, uh, defer any comment uh, to their office. Okay. And I don't need to get off too far off this, uh, the death investigation you have here, but one, one more question from viewers here who want to know any updates to that missing uh, young man, Michael Castro, uh, who everyone still has questions about. Yeah, so, so we, we do have uh, s some information that we're working on and it's, it's an active uh, investigation. Uh, and beyond that, you know, we're, we're not going to make any, any further comments. Yeah. For the officers involved in the uh, Tatao case, um, are they still on administrative leave or um, are they on leave without pay now? No, they, they uh, uh, because of the personal rules, uh, the, the maximum amount of uh, administrative leave days have been exhausted and they're back uh, on duty. Back on duty, right. right. Captain, I know it's an ongoing investigation in this case, but are you able to say whether or not there are any other suspects, possible suspects in this case, aside from Chitaro or? Yes, so uh, if you recall, a couple weeks ago, there was a uh, one person who was arrested in connection with this case. Uh, again, but because, uh, you know, our, our evidence points to uh, two individuals, uh, you know, Chotaro being the second person, uh, you know, uh, we're still actively investigating and, and looking for uh, Mr. Uh, Chotaro this time. Is the first uh, suspect still in custody or has he been... I think he's still in Yeah. Uh, based on our coordination with the Attorney General's office, I believe that he's still uh, being incarcerated at DOC. Who is, who is that? Can you identify that person? He's a magistrate, right? Yes, he yeah. was magistrate. You know, I'm sorry, I don't have that name with me right off the bat. Uh, Sergeant Paul Tapal would, would uh, follow up and, and provide you guys the, the name. Okay, so now uh, so there's two suspects in this case. Um, so is Shitaru the main suspect and um, I guess possible person that did the stabbing or um, was the second person, or I'm sorry, the first person has already been arrested, right? And charged in this case, but uh, who I guess is the main suspect? Uh, again, uh, because you know, the, Ms. Uh, Chotaro has been identified as a second person in this investigation, uh, again, we're still uh, conducting an, uh, an investigation into this matter. And so once you know, we, we have a totality of the case, then we'll understand uh, better you know, who the prime suspect will be in the actual murder. Is there a reason to believe that this is a, uh, like a, 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 these two men assailed the victim, or are we looking at, you know, this could be one suspect and... Okay, well, no, so it, it, it only involves one incident, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what I can also add, right, is that um, this person is, is wanted for questioning. And everybody that knows him worked with him, former co-workers of him, we're looking at everybody. We're looking at everybody we want to talk to him because he's pending. Two weeks going now, right? So we really want to want to bring him, him in for questioning. How can we be certain that he didn't already uh, leave the island? Uh, we, we've been coordinating again with uh, uh, Customs and Border Protection and the Guam Customs and Quarantine. So we don't have, uh, we don't have any credible information that he has uh, fled the island. The area where the incident occurred, it, uh, it was the victim of resident, or like, was he, did he reside in that area? And then Shitaro, is that an mm -hmm. area that he commonly frequents? Well, we do know that Shitaro uh, frequents that area, uh, you know, based on, uh, uh, you know, so some of the uh, addresses that he's provided. Yeah. So, the so he's, the uh, and I, I'm not sure if the victim, uh, I don't have that information right now. Yeah. So we don't know if like he's a homeless man also, or. If yeah. He we, was, yeah. We don't have any information on the victim. Yeah. Has next of kin been identified? Um, I guess. Yes, be, uh, because we've been discussing the name. So uh, next of kin has been identified. Can you say if any uh, at this point if drugs or alcohol uh, 
was involved in this? Uh, again, we, we can't say at this point, yeah. We're still an active investigation. Is there any coordination with the residents in the area of that uh, Ipa Road area, uh, high state of alert, extra eyes to look out for this person? We, we, we have been visiting uh, the, the areas uh, known to be frequented by uh, Chotaro. And so, uh, again, anybody that any, has any connection to him, we, we've questioned and we've gone back and probably questioned multiple times uh, to see if they have any update information on, on uh, any contact that they've had with him. Okay. okay. Chief, one more yes. final call out to the community to help uh, you guys solve this death investigation after the death of this 54-year-old man. Yeah. So, uh, you know, to, to the people of Guam, uh, we need your help in locating a, a Renato Chitaro. And so if you have any information, again, please call uh, 472-8911, 475-8532, or 899-0566. Uh, he is considered uh, armed and dangerous. So please do not approach, uh, call the numbers provided or 911. And uh, we thank uh, the people of Guam for, th for their assistance and the community. Uh, please stay safe. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much.